This is the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashom Yahweh Shai, Bahashom Racha Kodash. Double honors to our venerable apostles and elders at Great Millstone who were well. And peace and blessings to the Lord's elect, the house of David. All right, so brother Haran, coming back at you with another lesson. Global and be edifying and uplifting unto the elect. All right, and um, today we're going to continue with uh, the historical overview. Um, lesson number three. Okay, and uh, in the previous lesson, we went into the patriarchs of our nation, which we dealt with uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, remember the family line that the Heavenly Father chose to deal with and uh, make a covenant with. All right, you look at all the people upon the face of the earth, all the nations, all the families that are upon the face of the earth. The Heavenly Father chose one nation, all right, and started with Abraham and then passed on down. Abraham's first son being um, Ishmael, all right, by Hagar. But the promise didn't go through them, all right. They went, it went through the son from Sarah, which was Isaac, okay. And then eventually Isaac had uh, two sons, Jacob and Esau. Esau being the firstborn, and so according to tradition, he's supposed to get the, the blessing. All right, but he was a wicked twin brother of Jacob, who was blessed from the beginning by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai to get the promise. Okay, the promise of or the inheritance of the covenant made by the heavenly Father and Abraham. Okay, and then on down you have the twelve tribes. All right, the twelve brothers that became the twelve tribes um, of Israel. All right, now we're going to read into uh, our time in Egypt, okay, a little bit after Joseph, because remember, we read about Genesis, I believe the 50th chapter, we went into what happened with when uh, Jacob had died, and then Joseph and his brothers were all, you know, uh, you know, communing and also uh, mourning the death of, of, um, of Jacob, whose name eventually became Israel. All right, so now we're going to read when we were in Egypt, okay? And then we'll read a little bit about the Exodus, and then we're going to close it out and then get ready for the next uh, ne next lesson. All right, it says, the Hebrews in Egypt, just like we are in modern day Egypt today. All right. This is the Hebrew settlement in Egypt corresponds to the period of the Hyksos or the Hyksos rule there roughly 1720 to 1550 BCE. The Hyksos, like the Hebrews, were a mixed ethnic group. Some, perhaps many, were Shemitic peoples. For this reason, it seems plausible that they were, according to the biblical account, willing to offer a position of power to Joseph, also a Shemite, and to give assistance to Joseph's family and other Shemites who came to Egypt in search of food during periods of famine. Now, we know the Hyksos to be Israelites, okay? The Hyksos, the word Hyksos uh, simply means uh, shepherd kings, all right, and Israel, all right, or Israelites were known, all right, I believe this, especially the tribe of Manasseh, all right, was known for having a lot of uh, cattle, okay, when we were traveling from um, the wilderness all the way into um, the promised land, into, into the land of Canaan, all right, Manasseh, I believe, had two sides, uh, one on the east part of Jordan, and then on the west part of Jordan as well. Okay, and I believe on the east side, uh, they, uh, they asked Moses and eventually Joshua, all right, that they could have that land for their, for their cattle. Okay, so Jake has always been known as shepherds, all right? When you look at our nation and everything, it's always been some form of um, relation between shepherds and people. Okay, Yahweh Shai being known as the ultimate shepherd, okay, and Israel being uh, known as the sheep of Yahweh Shai, or in this case, the sheep of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Okay. Yahweh Shai also said, What well, my sheep heareth my voice, and they what? And they do follow me. Okay, so that's another example of the whole dynamic between a shepherd and and, uh, and the sheep. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so continuing, it says, Oh, not to mention uh, even King David, all right, the king of Israel, all right, he, he was also um, a shepherd. All right, before he became a king, he was a shepherd tending. His father Jesse's um, sheep. All right. So continuing, it says, uh, this positive relationship with the Hyksos allowed the Hebrews to prosper 
in Egypt during this time. Eventually, the Hyksos domination in Egypt weakened and they were driven from the land by Amos I in about 1552 BCE. Amos re-established Egyptian domination, power, and culture. Following the expulsion of the, the Hyksos, according to the biblical account, quote, a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them or they will increase and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us. End quote. All right, and that is, um, that is the, the, an account that we, we, we read about in the book of uh, Exodus, the first chapter. Okay, right around the eighth verse on down, all right, we see this exact, um, uh, you know, quote, all right, if you will. It says, the Egyptians feared the return of the Hyksos and the Hebrews' support of and loyalty to them. And the Hebrews were enslaved and were forced to work in a massive new building program in Egypt. For the Hebrews, this was a time of severe oppression. It is generally accepted that Seti I, which was from, he was from 1305 to 1290 BCE, was the Pharaoh of the oppression, and that the Pharaoh of the Exodus was Ramses II, which he came in from 1290 to about 1224 BCE, okay? Seti I initiated a major building program in the north, relocating the Egyptian capital from Thebes to Avaris and constructing the new cities of Python and Ramses. All right, and that's actually an account that we can get in the book of Exodus. All right, going all the way back again to the first chapter. And we're going to read a little bit about this as well. All right. Um, as a matter of fact, we're going to actually read the whole chapter as, as soon as we're done reading this. It says, an, an inexpensive labor force was necessary for such a massive building campaign. And Egyptian records report that the Apiru, among them the Hebrews, were used for this purpose. It seems likely that this is the time of the Hebrew enslavement recorded in the Bible. All right, we're going to read about that, okay? This is the book of Exodus chapter 1, continuing verse 1. It says, Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin. Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that, when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies, and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And we're going to pause right there for a second because as it tells you in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, that there is no new thing under the sun right so the same exact things that was happening um or i should say similar things that were happening that had the same effect right back in the time of egypt is the same thing that's happening now again in modern day egypt okay you have um israelites that are brought brought over here by way of uh, cargo uh, um ships okay and are made slaves for over 400 years 
all right and in the time that we're in this foreign land speaking a foreign language we're cut off of our heritage okay we don't know who we are we don't know who our god is we don't know what our customs our laws and everything uh, um is supposed to be until the heavenly father sends his one of his angels all right in this case rabbi abba bivens okay to open up the minds as it tells you in the book of malachi the fourth chapter that he's going to send a, a, a messenger okay uh before the great and dreadful day of the lord to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers okay and we are those fathers coming back all right to turn the hearts of the children to the heavenly father okay by way of preaching this word and how do you do that because remember you have to go back to your heritage this is all a familial covenant that the heavenly father made with a specific family okay the house of jacob all right the 12 tribes the 12 brethren that ended up in egypt and then over time we became so great of a people that the egyptians were afraid okay same thing is happening here again we're in a foreign land all right by taken by foreign people who are oppressing us all right so the the par the, the similarities all right when you actually look at back then and now is 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 straight to the point like literally as is okay and the lord also talks about the plagues that are from egypt or in the time of egypt he's going to hit america this modern day egypt with those plagues okay now it doesn't have to necessarily be the same exact thing we might not see water turn into blood or whatever the case may be right but the lord could still do that right the lord could still do that i believe a couple of years ago if i'm not mistaken there was some form of water body out in russia right and the heavenly father turned that whole thing into blood pitch red you know so it's not it's, it's, it's nothing for the heavenly father to do that you know you got um uh you know in new york yeah you got the, the hudson river right uh in in different parts of the midwest you have um uh the um i forget the name of the river oh oh shit it goes through mississippi right? there's a mississippi river if i'm not mistaken right so you got a lot of these different things that are very very similar okay to uh ancient egypt okay being that america is uh based or, or formulated um after ancient egypt spiritually hence you have revelation the eighth chapter that talks about um america being spiritual sodom and egypt let me just go go into that real quick and see uh, revelation the 11th chapter i misspoke there for a second all right there's a book of revelation chapter 11 and verse 8 it says and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called sodom and egypt where also our lord was crucified okay so that 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 dead bodies is talking about the israelites over here who don't know that they're israelites right they're called negroes right when you go to that word negro in the greek it goes to the word necro which means dead okay so we're living over here as basically dead people we call ourselves black latino native americans that has no life that has no substance that has no power okay so in being in a dead state you have no no rulership you have no laws you have no representation you have nothing you have no culture right you have no truth you basically have no life you know everything that we get is given to us we can't be creators and owners at the same time okay so all these things culminating to make us a dead people we're at the mercy or at the hand of the mercy of esau edom and the rest of these other nations okay they pry on our on our on our um abilities all right but then at the same time they use those abilities against us in a wicked way okay jake knows how to rap or we're going to take them and sign a contract so they can destroy their own people oh jake is into entertainment and they're really good with the basketball and the, and the volleyball and the baseball and the soccer and whatever golf right we're going to make money off of them and use them as a controlling tactic against their own people right how come we've never had right a, a, a group of men stand up like now all right to preach the heavenly father's word and to bring our people out of this um this this uh this mindset of of, of being dead okay like it tells you in the book of um um micah let me see if i can get that real quick all right the book of micah chapter 2 and verse 10 it says arise ye and depart for this is not your rest because it is polluted it shall destroy you even with a sword destruction all right so that arising is going into what waking up from the dead okay not necessarily you know uh 
being physically dead, but also what being spiritually dead, right? Uh, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Okay, so there you have it. We 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 are in a dead state without the knowledge of our heavenly Father, Hosea four and six. All right. So now the heavenly Father is putting that spirit back. Okay, through the through the through the uh, great men of uh, great millstone on down. All right, Elder Apostle Tahar on down. Okay, to what? To 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 bring that spirit, that renewed, alive spirit that Yahweh Shah was teaching back in us. Okay, and only the elect are going to receive that new spirit. Everybody else is going to remain in that dead state, and they're going to eat the missiles when they come. Okay. So going back to um to Exodus, the first chapter. All right, again, we are reading about when we're in the time of um in the land of Egypt. All right, during the time of um of Joseph and at, well after the time of Joseph, I should say. Okay. So continuing, it says. <clears throat> It says, verse um, Exodus chapter one, and um, and verse verse uh, verse twelve. It says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Just the same thing that you're seeing now, right? The more they sent in people like Vocab and uh, Quas Brown, and you know, even people in our own nation, right? Working with Esau hand by hand. Scriptures tell you, though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished, right? So they're gonna get their judgment as well for selling out, right? But this is nothing new. Two thousand years ago, you had niggas that sold out and put your house out of death, and then went after the rest of the disciples. So it's nothing new, right? The same spirits coming back again. There's no new thing under the sun, right? So we we rejoice in that. We praise Yahweh Hashem Yahushai for that. That hey Lord, you know you never forgot us. We read about some of these men in the scriptures. Some of those men are back here again. We we are we are some of those men coming back, right? Because we're doing and seeing the same exact things that those men were doing. And we're getting the same result that those men are those men got okay which is the wicked uh you know rising up you had you had uh stefan cursing their ass out okay for being goddamn wicked ass niggas okay same thing you're getting today you know niggas was gnashing their teeth oh these niggas oh gms oh you you know <laughs> going crazy for no reason man just waiting to eat missiles and one thing i've noticed lately too man a lot of niggas just coming out the woodwork on some bugged out shit man and the scriptures tell you that you know the scriptures tell you that anyway uh let's continue it says um verse 13 and the egyptians made the children of israel to serve with rigor and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field all their service wherein they made they ser uh, made them serve was with rigor doesn't that sound like the, the the hardcore slavery that so-called blacks was in we were serving with rigor we had chains around our necks chains around our feet chains around our arms chains around our waist okay being whipped being beaten being castrated all right being sold upon uh different plantations all right that's all these different things we went through that and when you go into the the history you had jake that was singing in the plantations it wasn't a Chinaman that was over here serving slavery. So how the fuck are they going to be out here trying to talk about they part of the covenant? You don't hear no Chinaman talking. He's in he's in China land somewhere trying to think about businesses uh, around the world. All right. How he's going to push his Chinese uh, uh, industries around the world. He ain't thinking about Yahweh Bashmi Shai's kingdom. Right. You got the Jays that were funding. All right. The um, the slave trade. They had ships that was uh, uh, that came from uh, so-called Jewish um, companies. Okay. The, 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 the so-called taskmasters, where a lot of them were Jays, okay, that came over here and established themselves over here, and they were like, nah, we want them niggas, all right? We want them niggas, man, all right? We don't want no other body, no no one else on this earth. We want them niggas, them, them Hebrews, man, all right? Hmm. So continue, it says, and the king, uh, Exodus 1 verse 15, and the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared the Most High, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, 
but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, uh, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto, unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. In other words, they were, they, they're so lively that the children are coming out of them before we even get there. That was, the, that was the trick that they said, again, using wisdom, right? Before we're even able to get there, the baby's already coming out. Oh, what are we going to do? You know, we can't stop it. It's already happened. You see, therefore, the Most High dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared the Most High that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. And that is the end of Exodus, the first chapter. And, um, Lord willing, we're going to pick up on the second chapter, which goes into the birth of Moses, and then leads us into the actual Exodus. Okay? And uh, Lord willing, you know, we're about to enter into another exodus, but, but by this time it's going to be greater, all right, than the one uh, from, from, from ancient Egypt, okay? This is going to be done directly by the Son of the Heavenly Father, Yahushai. And no, he's not coming for the whole nation. He's only coming for his elect, all right, which is a few men, women, and children who believe on a doctrine that we're teaching today, okay? No ifs, ends, or buts about it. If you don't believe what we're saying, you're not of the elect, sit here and wait for your missiles point blank period we're not here to debate we're not here to convince you we're not here to be a therapist we're not here to make you feel better about yourself right we're not here to sit here and you know uh sing kumbaya and everything is going to be good and we all go no 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 okay if you believe that you stay your ass in the churches okay you, you stay your ass over there god loves everyone you stay your ass over there okay jesus loves you stay your ass over there over here if we're talking about yahweh bashim yahushua and his elect and that's it and right, we stand on that. Okay, and of course, Esau is going to come and, and test our faith. <laughs> but guess what? Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has never failed. He's undefeated. And those who believe on him, we will be undefeated. Period. All right? So anyway, I'm going to leave it off there. Lowell and you are edified. In closing, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rachakodash. The water Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, and until next time, Shalom.